first thing you'll discover, I do not micromanage. My number one guidepost to command effectively is to delegate. So this meeting regards to Hopkins. I ask for the time. I do not want to hear how to make a watch. You'd prefer I took that myself. Guidepost number two. No red flags to downtown. No red flags. Drop-offs and summons activity, curtailments of our street presence are exactly what downtown is looking for. You want us to reinstitute the checkpoints and the drug sweeps? Have to. Even with this Hopkins situation? No red flags to downtown. Okay, boss. Let me go turn out the troops. Excellent. Good. Our new CO Captain Zarola is doing a day tour today. See him out of his office, you might want to say hello. Precinct conditions. We're resuming high-profile street presence on Pacific and 4th. Also resuming motorist checkpoints. Vanderbilt at Atlantic, Flatbush at Church. But we're not getting sent to Hopkins Grade School to punch out crossing guards. You got a question, Villain Weber? Sorry, Sarge. Just doesn't seem like a great time to be out there pissing people off. I don't disagree with you, but those are our orders, so we'll carry out our stops and our summons activities with even more remarkable than usual sensitivity. Thanks. All right, that's it. Let's have a safe one. Snap two, Anne Marie. Got a homicide by convertible sofa. Captain Zarola, sorry, he couldn't join us. This is Wendell Ford. He's my lawyer, and for my brother's estate. How do you do, Sergeant? I wanted to lay out where things stand with the inquiry into Miss Hopkins' brother's death. We have a pretty good idea where they stand. I've been checking daily with the medical examiner's office. Which still won't give us their findings. And the autopsy report should be forthcoming end of business today. Also, we've completed the first round of interviews with the officers involved in your brother's arrest. And what will that cover-up get announced? Mavis, why don't we let Sergeant Santoro speak his piece? That investigation is being handled by the Internal Affairs Bureau, Miss Hopkins, which is separate and completely independent. I'm sure that you loved your brother. And if I said anything the other day which offended you, either of you, I apologize. It was an emotional time. I would like this to be a fresh start. Close as we can get under the circumstances. Circumstances being white cops drag a black man behind closed doors and killing? Please, do not start that crap. If anything wrongful was done to Deshaun Hopkins by cops that morning, and I don't know that there was, it had nothing to do with him being black. Please, let's not put that into this. I appreciate your apology, Sergeant. And I'm hoping that time will show that you honor your promises. Like I said, the ME's report be forthcoming. End of business. Well, I'm betting that report's going to be business as usual. And I don't think we should hold off on anything. We have been investigating my brother's death, Sergeant Centauro. If there's anything you've learned, I'd be grateful to hear about it. You'll hear once precautions are in place to guarantee that our information gets pursued. If that means you're holding a press conference, I would hope that's not an occasion to raise the tensions. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for having us in. You know what I noticed, Sergeant? I notice how your department develops deep concerns about not raising community tensions and wanting a fresh start right after some cop's done something that might put him behind bars. Anyways, thanks for coming.
Well, one minute I'm in the recliner watching a football contest on a classic sports channel. Next, I look over, and she's gone. Asphyxiated in a sofa bed. Yeah, that's how she must have suffocated. How do you think Mrs. Stubb would have managed to fold herself up like that? Faulty spring mechanism in the bed is the only thing I can imagine. Uh-huh. When a faulty mechanism caused the bed to fold up, did you hear your wife say anything? I remember at some point her voice sounded a little muffled. You look over when that happened? I was absorbed. Watching a game, figured leave well enough alone. Notre Dame, Michigan State, 1966. The 10-10 tie. She probably didn't let you do that usually. What? Watch the football when I wanted? <laughs> I should say not, not her. Oh, wait a minute. Well, oh, yeah, I see where this is going. If you were suggesting I got out of that recliner and deliberately folded up in a sofa bed someone I've been married to for 35 years, you are 100% wrong. 7-4, Sergeant, on the air, okay? Yeah, Sergeant, I'm standing by. 7-4, Sergeant, 1085 Sector Charlie, Baptist Church, President and Rogers. 7-4, Sergeant, we'll respond. Is it possible I fell asleep in the recliner? Got up to urinate while still asleep. On my way to the bathroom, I accidentally triggered that bar that has a faulty mechanism on it by somehow jarring it. Wait for the M.E., then take Mr. Stutt to the house. Sure. Anything's possible. That's the, uh, that's the, the tripwire fold-up mechanism. Don't do that, Mr. Stud. Humiliate for work. Sorry for the inconvenience. See your license and registration, please. Well, how come you're not stopping him? We're stopping every third car, sir. And there's no difference who's driving. No difference, that's right. Right. Sorry for the inconvenience. Done now! Hey, where are you going? One taken off, Jimmy. Hey. Black Caddy proceeding northbound on Bedford Avenue, past Dean. Stop! Yeah, go off. That means stop. Pull it over, lady. Put your hands where I can see him. Relax, all right? I'm not a criminal. Watch your take off. I was sick of waiting. Not because you couldn't stand to talk. I got him, Jimmy. There's a man down. I got some Cuban cigars, all right? Confessing in advance. How you doing, sir? I got sugar and heart disease. Your chest hurts you? I think it is. Anyone know this man's family? Uh, I know it's right. Tell her I'm taking him to King's hey. County. See, now that's what I'm talking about. If there wasn't all checkpoint Charlie up in here, we wouldn't be seeing this. If he helped the man, let him help the I ain't stopping him from helping the man. We're headed to the hospital. That one's a collar. Got it. That's a kid you yelled at. Snatch him up, Phil. We need to talk it to him. Hey, hold on. Don't make me run. You holding Donnell? No, sir, officer. Take him into the house. Just hold him till I get back from the hospital. This is a pretty exciting day. No one condones what Deshaun Hopkins did on these streets, but neither do we condone what may have been done to him by the police. What I'm concerned with now is What's achieving up? some peace. Hopkins for people, watch you from over the next corner. Let Central know you're over there. Nobody's All right, sir. Eyewitnesses exist. Nobody's taken their statement. So we have decided that we must take the initiative. We are here to announce that no thanks to any official investigation, we found an eyewitness to a cop beating Deshaun Hopkins after he was shot while he was handcuffed. Can this eyewitness identify which cop it was? This is Mr. Kenneth Nevins, a member of the community. I'm going to let him tell you himself. I, I saw a police officer beat Deshaun Hopkins on the street 
after he'd been arrested and cuffed. I, I didn't get the shield number, but the name on the uniform was Lowry. Did you tell this to the cop? As soon as we leave here, that's where we're going, and we'll see what they do with it from there. Are you accusing this officer in Hopkins' death? We're turning this matter over to the police, and we'll see what they decide. Just like Scotch tape is not necessarily from Scotland, Havana cigars are not necessarily from Havana. It's a brand name designation. That's all it is. Gotcha. Crime fighter extraordinaire. Run it for the sauce. I'll put Lippy inside. Another white working man takes it in the shorts. Six boxes of Havanas out of this hump's trunk, Sarge. I know you like to vouch for them personally. No, no. We got a situation. About what? About Jack. Lieutenant Jonas, Internal Affairs Bureau. Uh, Mr. Nevis? Yes. And I'm Wendell Ford. Wendell Ford. Why don't we go upstairs? How's that hot guy? Angina. They don't think he had an attack. What's IAB doing with Kenny Nevins? Come here. Here's that kid. You want to give up the Cabanos? Okay. Come in. What's going on? Guy says he saw Jack Lowry beat Hopkins on the way into the house. Some way coming forward, Nevis is looking to hurt. All he's saying is what happened on the street anyhow. If they're looking to hurt Jack, they say the street shows the state of mind inside. You gotta ride this kid to the morgue. Let Central know Sector Charlie's at a homicide, 379 Lorraine Street, out the rest of the tour. Okay, sir. You know what kind of homicide, boss? Male black, gunshot victim. Some abandoned building. Let's take him over there. There's a back entrance. No one will spot us. Sure, let's take him to the back entrance on Lorraine Street. Not for anything, Jimmy. They tell me to grab this kid up, so that's what I do. I grab the kid up, I bring him in, I stay with him like a human vending machine. You come back to the house, still don't lay out the play. Let's take him to Lorraine Street. This Darnell's brother was a decent kid. Got killed last year on his way to work. This one's been bouncing around since. Started mewling now for Eddie Vasquez, his dealer on Eastern Parkway. Half a chance we get to the kid, we still can turn him around, take the dealer out too. Oh, I know. I'm sorry about being so closed mouth. Not like you had a lot of time to tell me. No, it's a problem I got. Boss, you holding any work? You take an hour lost time? Go ahead. Donnell, let's go. Where are we going? Field trip, chop, chop, let's go. Where were you standing? Um, by the, by, by the subway. Where was Officer Lowry? He was dragging Hopkins uh, toward the station house from up by that bar on Dean. So you were watching from a couple hundred feet away? Eighty-five feet. So from across the street, what do you see Officer Lowry do? Well, on Hopkins. How many times? A lot. I don't know how many. Officers canvassing the street that day, Kenny. Maybe if you'd open your mouth to one of them, you would have remembered better. He's here now. You want him to say what he saw or not? I'm just interested in how your client got over the hump coming forward to cooperate. Is this trial coming up on this GLA caller I see here, Kenny? We're not here to talk about that. He represents you? What if he is? Well, maybe a tap. This is how you pay his fee. Set him up for his third on the sister civil suit against the city. You think I'm going to sit here for this? The scales never volunteer cooperation without a dollar involved in it since the day he rolled his first drunk on the street. He's done or we're out of here. Obviously, your client's uh, credibility is an issue, Mr. Ford. But at the same time, no one means to insult you or treat him like a criminal. No one is going to interrupt you anymore, Kenny. Use your own words. Go at your own pace. Just tell us what Officer Lowry did to Mr. Hopkins. All right. My office. And with the captain. Okay. What the hell's going on? Shut that door. What's the matter, Captain? Go away an hour and a half, I come back to upheaval. What is the upheaval? In this Hopkins matter, which occurred before I came here. I have to hear in a radio station driving back here accusations against an officer in this command. The civilian made the complaints given a statement upstairs. Did this come out of your constructive meeting this morning? 
came out of a press conference afterwards. They allege this Skell Nevins saw Lowry strike Hopkins, bringing him into the house. Nevins is upstairs now? Talking to squad and IAB. So that's out of our present purview? Yes. <clears throat> How about this Lowry? I apprised him of the situation, sent him on his meal period. He's having some domestic problems I believe he's seen as a strange wife. I believe they're attempting to reconcile. And uh, how do we handle them subsequently? What do you mean? What do we do with them subsequently? Subsequently, we let him finish his tour. Sergeant, not sitting this man down while he's subject of allegations, we're waving a direct red flag in downtown's face. I'm not going to make a bum out of Jack Lowry, Captain, because some skell says while Lowry's bringing a murderer under control, he gives the asshole a smack. When downtown calls, the phone rings in this office. That happens? Why don't you put it on me? Downtown calls, you tell him I felt that sitting Lowry down would give his morale problems. I'm new to the command. Not having a close read yet, I, I delegate it. I could have him finish his shift working the cells. Off the street, but not hung out to dry. <clears throat> Sounds good. Okay, then. This guy is bad. Our fearless leader. What's he say about Jack? Sit him down. We say no. Well, for one scale pedal in the story. Wait a minute, that scale says that Jack beat Hopkins? I mean, whatever happened on the street, that's no proof of what happened inside. Oh, yeah, that'll slow IAB down. Some black street thief makes up a story. They're going to take his word over yours. I don't know what they're going to do. You want to see me for, Yvonne? Whatever happened, you acted with your best intentions, Jack, and what that bastard got, he deserved. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, <clears throat> well, I wanted to see you. I want you to move back in, Jack. Got a lot of stuff we gotta straighten out before that can happen. I want to wake up next to you again, Jack. I want us to try again. Right now, I got a lot of other things in my mind. <sighs> Jack, one thing I do know is when you go too long without sex, it affects you. Get down on yourself, get down on the world. Until we can straighten that out, nothing else can be rectified. Can we please go someplace right now? Can't get caught on an extended meal. Then come over tonight. Okay. Good. Appreciate you sticking around, Doc. Now, what's it about? Dr. Vanderloop, this is Darnell Withers. I don't shake your hands. This man's intestines are on me. Yeah, okay. The reason Darnell turns away like that, Doc, that bored, smart-ass attitude. Nothing he needs to learn no more about life. I see. Darnell's got it all figured out. I see. Yeah, let me show you how this person died, young man. I see how he died. He received two gunshot wounds to the upper torso and three to his genitals. Now, you would probably say it. Those were shots to his nuts. Now, here is where his genitals would have been blown off by a large caliber handgun. Now, that obviously caused him a lot of pain, but you can actually live without your penis uh, testicles. What made him die was that one of the bullets blew his penis and testicles off, ruptured the femoral artery in his thigh, which caused all the blood in his body to pour out. And that's what we write up as cause of death. Okay, I get the point. Oh, you do? Well, I've autopsied over 2,700 murders. I still don't get the point. All right? Yeah, thanks again, Doc. Yeah, what information do you have on that 62-year-old female asphyxiated in a convertible sofa? I know they brought the husband in for questioning. What do you think, Darnell? I've seen dead bodies before. Tough way to die. Oh, they brought the husband in, huh? Yeah, I think they like him pretty good. Boy, some son of a bitch doesn't want to be bothered with the old bag anymore. Wants to dye his hair, make a fool of himself with bar floozies. I didn't get the whole story, Doc. 
He had it in his mind this morning to get his balls shot off. Anyways, thanks a lot. Yeah, sure. I'll let him get the son of a bitch husband a lethal injection in his arm. See how he likes that. Can I get out of here now? You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. This don't happen to you, right, Darnell? Look, I just want to get out of here. You're too fast, too smart. I get the point. I saw your brother play football. You're not faster than him. And he also wound up shot to death in a hallway. I knew you were going to start talking about him. We're going to talk about him because I'm the one found his body. I found him dead, Darnell. And you're no faster than your brother, and you're no smarter than he was. You look at me. I get the point. You don't get the point till you're on the right side of this. Doing what you're doing for Eddie Vasquez, you're just about to wear the only questions when you go away or when the bullet's going to come. Now, are you going to take a step? So what do you mean? You want to live, Darnell? Yeah. You're going to take the step. What I got to do? You got to step away from these people you've been working for. How am I going to step away? Did you stash what you were holding for Vasquez after I called you on the street? Say if I did. Is it still there? What if it was? I'm going to tell you what you need to do, Darnell. You're going to do it? You're going to get me killed. I'll show you a way out if you take it. You want to live? Yeah, I want to live. Just tell me what I got to do. Okay. Okay. Not, I haven't said yet. We won't do it today. We squirm a while. I'd like you to finish the rest of your tour on the cells. Yeah, huh? The scumbag puts your name out beating Hopkins. So let's put the rest we got to deal with. I know. Captain probably wanted me on my ass. No, no. You're all right with him. Is that a time to talk to Nona again? A little bit. How's it going? I'm on the cells. Mm-hmm. You're having another chat with the rat squad. They're not hearing nothing new. Taxpayers are getting their money's worth from us today. I'm done now. That's your aunt you're staying with? Yeah. You're Darnell's aunt? Angela Withers, yes I am. Officer Doyle, my partner, Officer Rusikoff. Give us a second with your aunt, Darnell. You in trouble? No. Second machine, hit it just left of the drop spot. You're even money for a soda. Come home. My neighbors say Donnell's picked up. We had a question on the serial number of your nephew's bike. Turned out to be a mix-up. He stole a bicycle? No, he didn't. Why you pick him up, then? You think he's involved with something else? We got no reason to think that, no. You saw these tracks in the back of my hand. Those look old. They are. I learned my lesson the hard way. That's why if Donnell's getting involved with drugs, I want to know about it. We know nobody's safe from bad influences on the street, but I promise we're not looking to Darnell for using drugs. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to take one more minute with your nephew, and then I'm going to turn him over to you. All right. I'm grateful for your interest. We're going to make the call, like we said. Yeah. You tell Eddie where the dope's stashed. Reassure him you were grabbed up for the bicycle. I got it. I promise you, Don. Now we'll take the precautions. He don't tie you up to what happens. He'll think it happened a totally different way. I trust you. Now, I'm concerned your aunt's using drugs. What can you tell me about that? As far as I know, she cops out of work. Where's her work? Manhattan. Being she's using. Don't tell her nothing about this. I don't tell her nothing anyway. You all right? Yeah. You're doing the right thing. Thanks for helping me. Keep him out of trouble, Angie. Don't worry. Kid says she's using it. There's a shock. You're aware of the new information provided by the civilian witness Nevins as to your partner's conduct? I know he's made allegations. How out of control was Jack? 
I wouldn't say he was ever out of control. Officer Valentine, Lowry hit a handcuffed prisoner on the street in front of witnesses. He was out of control. Now, I am asking if, while he was out of control, after he got in that room, he hit the prisoner again. I didn't see it if he did. You have a wonderful record, Nona. Accommodation, a meritorious, two EPDs. <laughs> And I haven't noticed a welcome mat out for African-American females around here, so I know these didn't come easy. Lieutenant, are you about to tell me I'm a credit to my sex and race? No. I'm about to tell you that the idea of a blue wall of silence is an illusion. People on this job look out for themselves like they do on any other. And they're going to look out for themselves in this investigation. And I'm going to help them see where their self-interest lies. I'm going to make them understand that if they skirt the truth, it'll cost them their jobs and maybe their freedom. And I'm going to let them know that if they do the right thing, they'll be rewarded. Human nature being what it is, people are going to tell me what Jack Lowry did in that room. And when they do, Nona, if I find out that you have been shooting me through the grease once I am through with Lowry, I will start in on you. Please don't threaten me, Lieutenant. You don't want that, and I don't want to do it, but I will. I have an autopsy report coming out tomorrow that says that Fashon Hopkins died from trauma to the chest. Did you see Jack Lowry hit him there? No. What did Lowry do in that room? He slapped him in the face. He was never near his chest. How many times in the face? Once. Fist open or closed? Open. Were you in the room the entire time? Just about. I have testimony from two paramedics that on arrival in that room, it was empty except for Hopkins. And you just said there's a period of time that you weren't with Lowry in that room. When you were in the room, you saw Lowry strike the man in the face. Just guessing now, officer. When you weren't in the room, who was your money on for hitting Hopkins in the chest? What a joke. Call that grounds for a search. Plain sight, and Plain sight, my dick. You want to keep using it? Don't be talking about it. What do we got? Eddie Vasquez, boss. Routine car stop, two ounces of rock cocaine in plain sight. The hell it was in plain sight! Reservations noted, Eddie. Hey, Jimmy. How'd it go? I'd say we're okay on a probable cause. How was his attitude? Well, very positive. I'm asking, did he express misgivings how he came to take the collar? None at all, Jimmy. He definitely bought it was a traffic stop. Thanks for the help, CJ. Sure. No, no. How'd it go? Okay. Excuse me, Jack. What's your plan for Lowry tomorrow? He finished his tour doing the cells. Sounds like a plan for tomorrow. I don't want him on the cells. I want him riding with you. If you think I'm taking Judas tour, you can kiss my ass. No one is asking you to sell Lowry out or to advocate that he act against self-interest. I just want to know what he's thinking. Check with my captain. I am giving you a direct order. I'm saying I'll check with my captain, Lieutenant, if he wants an IB officer making up his precinct's duty roster. He's going down, Frank. His own partner puts him smack in the guy in the sitting room. Valentine says that? Yeah. You better move fast to get on the right side of this. I don't think it's going to take very long. Report of a DOA. And a lot. Butler in third. I'll see who's still here. Doc. Yeah. The distinguished physician Vandaloo. I need the uh, prescription drug inventory from the Stutt residence. Officer Kersey has that. She's in the women's locker facility at the moment. The phone's down. What, am I supposed to be wearing one of those ankle bracelets? Account for my movements? No, not at all. Now, what's happening to uh, Cesar Romero, anyhow? 
You son of a bitch, Dutt. I think the DA's a little iffy about going forward. The DA, huh? Well, there's a set of broad shoulders for you. Doc, like a cigar? What is it? Corona. From an island nation to the south. I don't particularly get involved with cigars anymore. At one time, I enjoyed it. Hey, Doc. Doc needs a med inventory from the Stutt residence. Oh, sure. Come on, Doc. Uh, this Stutt, he's uh, released, held over, what? Uh, he's in a holding cell. They're waiting to take him to central booking. What's up? I have a report of the DOA. We're all right. Okay. Come on, Doc. Any chance I could take a look? I, I, I just want to put a face together with the name. Sure, Doc. Are you and Angie Dickinson going to the Poconos this weekend? Angie Dickinson? Oh, can't expect you to take your wife to the Poconos. Only right you should be with somebody better suited to yourself, Angie Dickinson. Sit Charisse. Is he supposed to be in here yelling at me like this? Doc, let's go back out now, okay? It's all right. Come on, let's go. It's okay. They'll come. It'll dawn on that son of a bitch exactly what he did. Whether they prosecute him or not. I'm sure that's going to happen. Sunday night, he goes to take himself cornflakes and milk. It'll dawn on him that she's not there. Oh, you think you know what it's like to me to be alone. You lose somebody like that. You have no idea. My own wife passed six months ago. I would have preferred to have more time with her, not less. Mike Kavanaugh, the guy who got killed when that Hopkins went psycho. He was my fiance. He was. We were engaged six months, supposed to get married at Thanksgiving. So you know. There, there. idea who might have shot No! Him. But you're not surprised he died. You're not crying. I was worried he might be involved with something. I told you that before. When you were in about the bike? We got to do this out here? What neighbor told you we picked Darnell up for the bike, Angie? One of these neighbors here? I don't remember. You don't remember who told you? Lose my nephew. Gonna do police brutality on me now, too. Someone from Eddie's crew come tell you Darnell got grabbed up? When you come to the station house and you go back lying to those people afterwards, you get tightened up with some dope of your own? Gonna be here on the street! No. We're gonna have you ride around with us, Angie. Have you sit comfortable next to me in the front seat so everyone can see you while we canvass the drug corners. I'll give you the name you're looking for and how to find them, right? Don't be driving me around and don't be doing it here. ME's report. What's the gift for cause of death? Punctured lung caused by compression fracture of the ribs. How'd my brother get those? I couldn't tell you that. He didn't get them by being shot. He got them by being beaten. What this report tells us is that Deshaun Hopkins was beaten to death. Hopefully the eyewitness account of Mr. Kenneth Nevins has started us on a road toward determining who's responsible. Thank you, Sergeant, for doing what you said you would do. You're welcome.
Hey, Clemmy. So I be brought you back. I think I hurt Jack, Clemmy. Yeah. I don't know. He asked, was Jack out of control? I said, absolutely not. Talking about in the sitting room. In the sitting room, was he out of control? He asked if Jack hit him. Basically, he was trying to get me to say that Jack beat him to death. I told him he was completely off. He asked if Jack hit him, and then basically, what did you say? I said he slapped him once, never near his chest. Slapped him on the floor while he was in the sitting room. He got over on me, Clemmy. I never was in there before, and he got me scared. And I said stuff I didn't want to. It doesn't sound like you did that bad. I put Jack hitting the guy. Now they've got him hitting Hopkins in the street and hitting him in the sitting room. Let me ask you a question. Would you put your time if I put in for days? Every time I look at you, I'm afraid anyone drawing breath knows what I'm feeling. Don't look then. Let me keep an eye on you. That Doc Vanderloop was real upset about our fold-up killer. <laughs> Doc's a pisser. Tell him it's a nice day, he's liable to punch you in the nose. Did you know he lost his wife? When I was first starting, they'd show the crime scenes together. Winners, they'd both wear these big rubber galoshes. They had this pet German Shepherd, must have been 15, bad cataracts. Dog could pass gas till he couldn't stay in the same room. <laughs> Oh. About five years ago, Doc told me his wife developed some kind of blood disorder. He really misses her. Yeah. She passed in February, I think. I still dream about me and Mikey. Doing things together. When I wake up in the morning, I have to realize he's gone. It hasn't been that long, Anne Marie. He's just gone a little while. Everywhere. I see couples. They go home together. They have dinner at the kitchen table. They tell each other things. Neither one would tell anybody else. I see uh, lights in the windows. I imagine the two people inside, they love each other. Making a life together. You'll get inside with someone. Life's gonna give you that memory. Something happened, Frank. What happened to Mikey was horrible. Something happened after that. I did something afterwards. Close your eyes. Open. Here I am. In the flesh. You didn't really want to walk away from this, did you? Anything else on the menu, Yvonne? I hope that's sexy and not sarcastic. What kind of day it's been. Keep waiting for the second shoe. Well, I hope. Time's gonna come when you're gonna turn to our relationship for refuge, Jack. I realize that I need to be patient for you to build that trust back up, and I am going to make that investment. It'd be nice if that happened. It's going to happen. Part of it's going to be on the fast track because I know that you need sex. And part of it's going to take some time. Meanwhile, if you could make a similar investment in trust... We've got an equity withdrawal opportunity on the condo, Jack, and it needs both of our signatures. Equity withdrawal opportunity? Wouldn't that be like a second mortgage? It needs both of our signatures. Really? Mm. Mm, it's been on my mind, and I figured while you were here, we would just get that taken care of. So it's not a trade-off, in other words, it's sex for the equity withdrawal. <sighs> Jack. Way off? Yeah. So if I said I'd want to take more debt on so you can keep spending more than I earn, that won't change your mind about wanting to help out with my sex needs. Don't start now with that sarcastic mouth. I break the mood? You're an asshole, Jack. Do you know that? Mm. You're punishing me for cheating on you. I'm not punishing you, Yvonne. I hope you might even have a nice night together. 
I don't have enough money, Jack. I am unable to function comfortably. I got like 120 bucks. 120 bucks? Jack, you're such a jerk. You are such a loser. I guess sex is off the table. <laughs> Do you want to know how big a loser you are? Huh? You're a white cop, the collar to black multiple murder, and you're going to wind up in jail. Do you have any idea how big of a loser it takes to pull that off? Did you do it, Jack? I hope at least you did it. I hope you got your six sadistic rocks off. No, I didn't do it. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been five weeks since my last confession. How have you been, Jimmy? Terry's doing good. First part of the academy. Kathleen seems good. She met my partner, Phil Rusikoff, tonight. Who I think is a good guy. I was part of a kid getting killed. How was that? I was trying to separate him off a drug dealer, Eddie Vasquez. I set Collar and the dealer so as not to jam this Darnell up. But his aunt that he lived with is a drug addict. She'd give up Darnell with the dealer's crew. What well, was your fault in it? I pressured this Darnell. I'd known his brother, who got killed. When Darnell come back to the neighborhood six weeks ago, I kept my eye on him. A couple weeks ago, I seen he started with his fast cash. What was your fault in it? I feel responsible. I pressured him. He'd gone to work for a drug dealer. You got to be careful with picking your spots. 14 years old, they murdered him in a lot. I worry I wasn't careful with my precautions when this poor kid got killed. Jimmy, the aunt sold the boy out. You tried to help him take a step. You do what you can. To hold yourself higher is sinning in pride. All right. I want you the Newman Singles Mixer Friday. Oh, how do we get to that? For 15 years, when I ask after you, you've told me about Terry and Kathleen. It's time to look at life in a new way. God bless you for how you've looked at it up until now, but he's not done with you yet. What penance do you want me to do? I've got you going to the mixer. And, uh, say a Hail Mary with me. Hail Mary, Hail Mary full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 